I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. In a way, I didn't have an apprenticeship. My father died much too young, and so it was all a very sudden kind of taking on and making the best job you can. It's a question of accepting the fact that here you are and, and it's your fate. And what a genuinely warm welcome she got everywhere she went. A thousand mile round the world tour to the far flung domains of the Commonwealth. The first made by a reigning monarch. Germany's warm welcome to Her Majesty and Prince Philip, the first visit by a British monarch for over 50 years. Another royal tour, this time to Ghana. A lightning visit to northern France. Another port of call, another official welcome ahead. On to New Zealand, with a Maori choir singing a welcome. I don't think you can stay in London all the time. You have to visit other parts of the country to either find out what's going on or try and encourage um, people in... in uh, different areas, some of which have unemployment, some of which have new factories. And I think the possibility of meeting more people is very important. Set in motion the nationwide celebrations of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's Silver Jubilee. 25 eventful and glorious years. is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure. <clears throat> In the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, it has turned out to be an annus horribilis. Three of her married children, all having marital difficulties in the space of a matter of months, and then a fire in Windsor Castle, somehow almost suggesting a kind of divine justice uh, being meted out on the House of Windsor, quite literally the House of Windsor. I sometimes wonder how future generations will judge the events of this tumultuous year. There can be no doubt, of course, that criticism is good for people and institutions that are part of public life. New institution, city, monarchy, whatever, should expect to be free from the scrutiny of those who give it their loyalty and support, not to mention those who don't. But we are all part of the same fabric of our national society. And that scrutiny by one part of another can be just as effective if it is made with a touch of gentleness, good humour and understanding. This is BBC Television from London. Diana, Princess of Wales, has died after a car crash in Paris. The French government announced her death just before five o'clock this morning. In a statement, Buckingham Palace said, the Queen and the Prince of Wales are deeply shocked and distressed by this terrible news. Normal programs have been suspended while we bring you the latest news and reaction. Diana, Princess of Wales has died. Now we go live to Buckingham Palace for a tribute from Her Majesty, the Queen. What I say to you now, as your Queen and as a grandmother, I say from my heart, First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. She was an exceptional and gifted human being. In good times and bad, she never lost her capacity to smile and laugh, nor to inspire others with her warmth and kindness. Queen and Duke of Edinburgh are coming out now. The Golden Jubilee coincided with another difficult year for the Queen because in 2002, both the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret died. So it was a difficult time in many ways for her. Change has become a constant. Managing it has become an expanding discipline. The way we embrace it defines our future. 
just days after giving what has been described as a car crash interview on television, Prince Andrew on Wednesday in a statement said that he would be stepping down from royal duties for the foreseeable future. Tonight, Oprah's interview with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Accusations of racism at the heart of the royal family could represent an existential threat for this ancient institution. A statement was released on behalf of the Queen. The issues raised, particularly that of race, are concerning. While some recollections may vary, they are taken very seriously and will be addressed by the family privately. Harry, Meghan and Archie will always be much-loved family members. The outbreak of coronavirus is now undeniably a global crisis and is now officially a pandemic. While we have faced challenges before, this one is different. This time we join with all nations across the globe in a common endeavour. We will succeed and that success will belong to every one of us. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, Better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. He is someone who doesn't take easily to compliments, but he has quite simply been my strength and stay all these years. And I and his whole family, and this and many other countries, owe him a debt greater than he would ever claim, or we shall ever know. When I was 21, I pledged my life to the service of our people, and I asked for God's help to make good that vow. Although that vow was made, in my salad days, when I was green in judgment, I do not regret nor attract one word of it.